Welcome back to another video guys. This week we're going to be having a look at Mitsubishi PLCs once again using GX Developer but now we're going to be having a look at counters. So last week we had a look at how to create a new project inside of GX Developer and how to use timers. Now we're going to use probably the next most popular instruction, counters inside of the PLC. So before we get started what I'd like you to do is hit the like button, don't forget to do that, comment below and also hit that subscribe button too. It definitely helps us out a lot in terms of getting our reach out there on YouTube so if you could hit that subscribe button it'd be much appreciated. Right let's get into this week's video. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up GX Developer just like we did last week again using version 8. I'm then going to just create a brand new project and it's going to be an FX CPU FX2N and we're just going to be using ladder as well and I'm just going to say OK to that. So here is our blank project, similar to what we had last week as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a mixture of timers and counters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a routine that's going to turn on a bit for one second on, one second off, one second on, one second off. Now we do have general bit addressing inside of this PLC that would allow us to do that, M8013, but I'm going to show you how to do that with timers, and then we're going to use that to then drive a counter. And we're going to show you what the counter does and how the counter works inside of Mitsubishi. So first of all, how do we create this one second pulse routine? So what we're going to do is we're just going to shift insert a few lines of code inside of here, and I'm going to put a normally open contact in, I'm going to tie that to M0. M0 is going to be my enable flag which I'll then set from the actual PLC. So there's our M0. Now what I want this to do is I want this to run a timer and it's going to be T0 and we're going to set it to K10 and if you remember from last week K10 is one second that's ten tenths of a second that's one second. Say OK to that and there's my timer in there. So what's going to happen here is when M0 turns on T0 is then going to begin running for one second. What's then going to happen is when T0 has finished running, it'll then turn on and what we'll then do is we'll have that run another timer. So T1, K, one second once again. So one will be used for the on period, one other time will then be used for the off period. So when M0 turns on, T0 will then begin to run, T0 will then turn on and then it will then turn on our T1. T1 will then begin to run for one second. And what we'll also do is when T0 is on, we'll also turn on a bit and we'll just have it turn on a bit M10, for example. That'll be my bit that turns on for one second, off for one second, on for one second, off for one second. Now what I need this to do, however, is when T1 has turned on, after it's finished running for one second, I need that to reset the entire routine. To do that pretty simply, we just put a normally closed contact inside of here and address that to T1. And that there is the one second clock pulse routine designed via ladder logic using timers. So here, when M0 turns on, T1 will initially be off, T0 will initially be off, which will mean this top rung here will begin to run. T0 will then run for t one second. After one second, T0 will then turn on, this contact will then close, T1 will then begin to run and M10 will turn on. When T1 has finished running, T1 will then turn on, this contact will open here, turning off T0, turning off this contact, turning off T1, turning off M10, turning off this contact, closing it once again and resetting the cycle. This is our one second clock pulse. So if I then F4 that, then what we can do is we can test this out. So if I then go to online, transfer setup, just make sure it's set to COM2, 19.2 killer board, quick connection test, successfully connected there. Okay that, okay that, and let's transfer that to the PLC. If I select main, execute that, say yes to that and let's download this and let's test out our pulse stream. Once we've tested out our pulse stream and we know that M10 turns on for one second, off for one second, we'll then use that to trigger our counter. All right, I'm just gonna knock that back into remote run, say yes to that, okay that, and just close this down. What we'll then do is we'll then go into monitor mode, and here we can see currently M10 is off at the moment. When I trigger our M0, force that on, that timer begins to run, M10 
is now turning on for one second, off for one second, on for one second, off for one second. And we can see there, there's your timers running there. Okay, great. Let's uh, turn that off, close that, and then let's go back to our right mode. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're now going to insert a few more lines of code, just shift insert. And what we're going to do is when M10 turns on, I then want to count when that turns on. And I want to count 10 counts of it. So here, if I use F5 and M10 on that normally open contact, when M10 turns on, I want to trigger a counter. Now to trigger a counter, it's the same instruction as a timer. It's the F7 coil. So we'll just select that. And now what I need to do is enable our counter. And our counter is similar to our timer. It's C for counter zero for the very first counter, space, K, our constant value, and now what we are counting to. Now this isn't in tenths of a second or anything like that, that's just for timers. If I want to count to 10, I simply just type in 10 and say okay to that. So there's our C0 and there's our K10. Now when the counter turns on C0, what I then wanted to do is I then want to turn on an output Y0 enter that and we'll then just F4 that and compile our program. Now what I could also do is I could say right well when C0 turns on turn off this clock pulse stream. So to do this what we'll do is we'll select where we have M0 and we will insert row. If I insert a row it actually inserts a column. Now Mitsubishi is calling rows columns for us a row is technically this sort of stuff here. This is a row, a line of code. It would be like a row. A column is like a column, which is these sections here. So insert row is very similar to insert column. So if I then just cut our M0, put that back into where it was, and then I use normally close contact to C0, that'll then turn off our pulse stream when our counter turns on. The way a counter works is just like the way a counter works in any other PLC. It doesn't care how long the input is on for, so it doesn't care if this is on for one second or ten minutes. All it matters is the rising edge of the input signal. So when this turns on, this counter will then count one, two, three, four. And it looks at the rising edge signals of this input. When it sees that turn on ten times, that's when the counter turns on. So now if we then just go to one line, right to PLC, and then let's test this design out here. Okay, that's downloaded there. We'll just go back to remote run. Say okay to that close that down and then go back to our monitor mode and now we're ready to go. So you can see here our counter is currently zero. If I now just go to our M0 here, force it on, you'll then see our M10 starting to pulse and you'll see our counter turning on one, two, three, and it's looking at the rising edge of that signal. If I turn off our M0, that stops this clock pulse for M10, and our counter remains at 6. It's not like a timer where when it loses its signal, it resets. Remember, all it's interested in is the rising edge signal. It doesn't care when it turns off, so it will retain that value inside of the counter. When I turn it back on, it then begins counting once again. So 7, 8, 9, and 10. And as soon as it hit 10, Y0 is now turned on. Our counter contact up here has technically turned on and opened and even though our M0 is currently on this routine cannot run because C0 is currently on as well. So the problem is now how do I reset my counter because if you think about it unlike a timer a timer resets when it loses its enable signal when does a counter reset well a counter resets when we tell it to. This means we have to use another instruction for this counter here. These counters aren't like counters inside of Siemens PLCs where they have a reset built into the instruction and you can just address that reset up. 
what we need to do is we need to use a reset instruction. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come offline and go back into write mode and then I'm going to insert another line of code. So shift insert, I'm going to put a normally open contact in, I'm going to tie that to M1 and that there is going to be my reset signal. So when I trigger M1, it's going to reset my counter. Now for us to use a reset signal, we use F8 this time, which is our application instruction. If I click on the instruction window, all I need to type in now is R S T space C zero and then say enter. And that is your reset instruction inside of Mitsubishi. Inside of Omron, it's R S E T. Okay. Siemens, they use R, you know, um, Alan Bradley, they use clear. They also use unlatch for their reset instructions. So different PLCs, different types of instruction names, but they all fundamentally do the same sort of thing. So what we'll do here is we'll just F for that and then compile that. And then what we'll do is we'll download this into the PLC and then we'll test it out. Okay guys, welcome back. I'm just going to knock this back into run mode, say yes to that. Okay that, close that down and then go back to our monitor mode. And now what we're going to do is our counter is back to zero because we've just stop started the PLC. And then I'm going to go to M0 and we're going to go to device test and force on. And off we go. So now our M10 begins counting. Three, four, five. And eventually, like I say, if I force it off now, it'll remain at six. If I force it back on again, it'll start counting once again. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. There we go. If I force off our M0, that then turns that off there. Now, if I go to my M1 and then force this on, that will then reset my counter back to zero. And there you go, you can see our C0 is went back to zero. That contact is closed again because now it's off and our reset is currently triggered. If I force that back off again, my reset is no longer being enabled, but now we can start the whole process up again. Now with this reset, this can reset at any time. So if I force this on now and have this count a couple counts and force it off now, if I go to my M1 now, and then say force on, it resets it back to zero once again. Force that back off. And that there is counters inside of Mitsubishi PLCs. Now, you would have noticed when I stop started the PLC before, that counter value when it was originally 10, actually went back to being zero again. And that's because when we stop started the PLC, it cleared the data inside of the PLC, which wasn't retentive. What we can actually do is if we wanted to keep that count value in, let's imagine we're counting parts for a batch, then we might want to retain that value even if we stop start that PLC. To do this, we open up our PLC parameter folder over here. Here is our parameter folder and inside of there is PLC parameter. If we double click this and then go to device, you'll then see inside of here counter 16 bit instructions there are 200 of them, starting from 0 up to 199, and our latching start, which is our retentivity, is our 100 to 199. So we have effectively 100 counters which are retentive. That means if we address a counter from C100 to C199, that value will then be retained. So let's test this out as well. Let's cancel that. And let's come offline now, so go back to right mode, double click our C0, and then change this to C100, so it's in that latching range. If we F4 that, double click our C0 over here, F4 that, and then double click our C0 over here, and change that to 100, and F4 that. Reset our C0. Now we're resetting our C100, and now let's go to one line and write this to our PLC. Go back to main, and what we'll do is we'll download the PLC parameters, they should already be in the PLC, but we'll just double check that they are, and we'll execute that now. 
So now our PLC has got latching memory inside of it, 100 to 199, and that is now assigned for our counter inside of our PLC program. Okay, so switch this back to remote run. Say okay to that, close that down, and then what we're gonna do is go back to monitor mode. The value is currently zero because we haven't used C100 just yet. But now if I go to device test on M0 and force that on, our counter begins counting one, two, three, four. And if I just stop it there and just close that down, you can see our counter currently has the value four inside of it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to our PLC and I'm gonna stop start the PLC. And what we should see is that value inside of there remain four. So let's have a good doing that. Okay, so as you would have seen there without me in the picture, our run status went to stop mode and then it went back to run mode and our counter has remained at four. If that was C0, however, that value would have vanished from the PLC. So C100 to C199, they are retentive. Now we can actually change that as well if we wanted to. All you would do is you would go to your PLC parameters, go to device, and you would change these values of where you want the retentivity to start and where you want the retentivity to end. And you can do that for things like M bits. you can do that for things like data registers inside of our PLC. Let's just close that down. Let's just go back to right mode. And that there, guys, is counters inside of Mitsubishi. Not just counters, but also the reset instruction and also retentive counters inside of Mitsubishi. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. As I mentioned before at the start of the video, please give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe and comment below on what you'd like to see next time. I'll see you guys next week.